traveled in vain, Zelensky did not achieve the goal of his visit to Washington. Putin is in the bunker, Zelensky is in the war zone. Zelensky's trip to Bakhmut was fake. Taking Kiev in three days, Ukrainian commander-in-chief Zaluzhny is afraid of Russian general Sorovikin. The Tector Media did all the dirty fact-checking work for you. We have separated real facts from those of a parallel universe. My name is Vadim Miski. In the next 10 minutes, I will tell you about the most impressive examples of Kremlin propaganda, as well as about some international media that use unverified sources of information. Here we go. Ukraine didn't fall. Ukraine is alive and kicking. Amid the news about the visit of the Ukrainian president to the United States, pro-Kremlin telegram channels spammed their subscribers with disinformation. Detector media analysts identified the most common of them. The central manipulation is that Volodymyr Zelensky failed to achieve the goal of his visit to Washington. But here is what Joe Biden said. Today, I'm announcing the next tranche of our security assistance to Ukraine. $1.85 billion package of security assistance that includes both direct transfers of equipment to you that Ukraine needs, as well as contracts to supply ammunition Ukraine will need in the months ahead for its artillery, its tanks, and its rocket launchers. Critically, in addition to these new capabilities, like precision aerial munitions, the package will include a Patriot missile battery, which will and on which will train Ukrainian forces to operate as part of the ongoing effort to help bolster Ukraine's air defense. It's going to take some time to complete the necessary training, but the Patriot battery will be another critical asset for Ukraine as it defends itself against Russian aggression. Another manipulation around the visit of the Ukrainian president to the United States is that Zelensky is getting prepared for negotiations with Putin. Here is the statement of the president of Ukraine. I believe there should be no taboos between us in our alliance. Ukraine never asked the American soldiers to fight on our land instead of us. I assure you that Ukrainian soldiers can perfectly operate American tanks and planes themselves. Financial, financial assistance is also critically important, and I would like to thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for both financial packages you have already provided us with and the ones you may be willing to decide on. Your money is not charity. It's an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. Russia, Russia could stop its aggression, really, if it wanted to, but you can speed up our victory. I know it. It is Putin who is actually counting on negotiations. Конфликты, все вооруженные конфликты заканчиваются так или иначе какими-то переговорами на дипломатическом треке. А мы не отказывались никогда. Это руководство Украины само себе запретило вести переговоры. Also, pro-Kremlin Telegram channels spread the claim that Zelensky was going to the United States solely to squeeze out even more money. However, according to the anonymous writers, this will not be that easy. After all, American congressmen are supposedly unfriendly towards Zelensky. Yeah, two whole minutes of the standing applause is indeed very unfriendly. Here is another manipulation. The initiator and sponsor of Zelensky's trip to the United States was the so-called gun lobby. This is what Russian uh, telegram channels call people who supposedly earn billions on the supply of Western weapons to Ukraine. This is an unsuccessful attempt by propagandists to downplay Washington's armed support. 
Another lie of the Kremlin propaganda is that the president of Ukraine was invited to the White House with the intention to find his weaknesses and understand how to trick him. No comment. By spreading such messages, propagandists want to create the impression that Ukraine will be left without support in the near future. This is a lie. The proof is that the US Senate has approved the government budget for 2023, which includes $45 billion in aid to Ukraine. I want to thank you for the fact that you protected the most important land, the desire to live in Ukraine, our power, our color. You are absolutely heroic people. Putin is in the bunker, Zelensky is in the war zone. This inspires Kremlin propagandists to spread another serving of fakes. For example, that Zelensky's trip to Bakhmut was staged. They claim that with the use of Western editing technologies, anything can be arranged for him, even a trip to the Kremlin. But in this case, the propagandists rely on their own experience. Just to mention Putin's fake meeting with the fake mothers of the mobilized. Among the invited women were regional officials and pro-government activists loyal to the Kremlin. They were identified by Russian opposition journalists. Or another fake meeting of the Russian president with female pilots and stewardesses. There were some details in the video that suggest that it was edited using green screen techniques. This is how Russian propaganda is trying to discredit the president of Ukraine, however, without success. I was at the front line in our Bakhmut, in our stronghold in the east of Ukraine, in the Donbas. The Russian military and missionaries have been attacking Bakhmut nonstop since May. They have been attacking it day and night, but Bakhmut stands. Last year, last year, 70,000 people lived there in Bakhmut, in this city, and now only a few civilians stay. Every inch of that land is soaked in blood. Roaring guns sound every hour. Trenches in the Donbas change hands several times a day in fierce combat and even hand fighting. But the Ukrainian Donbas stands. <laughs> Russians, Russians use everything, everything they have against Bakhmut and other our beautiful cities. The occupiers have a significant advantage in artillery. They have an advantage in ammunition. They have much more missiles and planes than we ever had. And it's true, but our defense forces stand. And we, and, and we all are proud of them. Meanwhile, Kremlin's propagandists are paving their own way to The Hague. Olga Skabeyeva said on the air of a federal TV channel that while the Ukrainian president is traveling, they can launch another offensive on Kyiv. So Zelensky practically a week will be in the process, so we need to take Kyiv. The Institute for the Study of War stated that the Ukrainian president's visit to the frontline city of Bakhmut undermines the Kremlin's information operation, which is intended to present Putin as an involved war leader. The owner of the private Russian army Wagner, Evgeny Prigozhin, delivered an even greater blow to the Putin's image. He tried to raise the authority of the Russian president amid Zelensky's visit to Bakhmut with no success. This was mentioned in the ISW report. 
Prigozhin published a video where he said that he had come to the front line near Bakhmut to talk to Zelensky. Experts noted that Prigozhin's calls for negotiations with Zelensky are not serious, as he doesn't hold any official position but is trying to present himself as an influential figure. And this is a still image from the video of Putin's visit to the joint headquarters of the troops involved in the special military operation, as the war is called in Russia. But it was filmed at the headquarters of the Southern Military District in Rostov-on-Don in Russia. This conclusion was made by the Agentstvo media outlet after comparing the interiors of the headquarters in the video with Putin to photos from earlier events in this room. Ukrainian commander-in-chief Zeluzhny is afraid of Russian general Surovikin. This fake is being spread by Russian propaganda media. According to Stop Fake Fact Checkers, this claim is based on the interview of the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine to The Economist. Zeluzhny's interview is real, but he did not say that he was afraid of Surovikin. This is a fake. The Soviet army welcomes an enforced one concept, the commander. But being a commander and being a leader is not the same. With all due respect to Mr. Surovikin, if you look at him, he is an ordinary Petrovic commander from Peter the Great's time. In fact, in his interview, Valery Zaluzhny discussed the course of the war, the Ukrainian counteroffensive, and described the Russian actions on the battlefield. Describing Sergei Surovikin, Zaluzhny called him an old-style commander. Using such manipulations, propagandists are uh, desperately trying to prove that the Russian army is one of the strongest in the world. The Western call for Russia to withdraw its troops from Ukraine is an attempt to draw attention away from corruption in the EU. NATO and the EU are supposedly preparing another fake for domestic use with Russia as the main character. Uh, such disinformation is being spread in Russian propaganda media. The reports claim that given the general corruption of the European Commission and the European Parliament, they urgently need a cover-up to distract the attention of their citizens from this problem. Analysts of the EU vs. Disinfo project noted this. According to the experts, this disinformation piece is about the joint statement of the EU and NATO, which promises support to Ukraine and calls on Russia to stop the invasion and withdraw from Ukraine. However, the EU is not trying to hide the corruption scandal at all. Um, I would like to remind you that former Vice President of the European Parliament, Eva Kaili, was among the four persons detained and accused by the Belgian Prosecutor's Office of participation in a criminal organization, money laundering and corruption. However, the EU is not trying to hide the corruption scandal at all. I would like to remind you that former Vice President of the European Parliament, Eva Kaili, was among the four persons detained and accused by the Belgian Prosecutor's Office of participation in a criminal organization, money laundering and corruption. Corruption is a crime. It has to be prosecuted. And we have full confidence and trust in the Belgian authorities who have the responsibility and thus the authority to deal with that file. But of course, events like that, corruption like that, erodes the trust of the public in the institutions. And this is painful. And we have to work hard to gain again trust and confidence. The European Parliament has voted today on a resolution that shows the path forward. And I'm very much looking forward to work very closely with the President of the European Parliament on the points that are concerning um, our two institutions. For example, the call for an ethics body, of course, not only concerning the two uh, institutions of Parliament and Commission, but also Council and other institutions of the European level. The claim that corruption in the European Commission and the European Parliament is a widespread 
and uh, standard practice is groundless. The EU has uh, reacted strongly to the scandal. The suspects in this case were immediately suspended from work. I am not a judge. There is a, a process ongoing. Certainly the news are very worrisome, very, very worrisome. We are facing some events, some facts that certainly worries me as a former president of the European Parliament also. There is nothing and no one being referred to, neither from the external action service, nor from the delegations. We are not affected by that. There is a police and judiciary actions. We have to follow these actions. We are very much certainly concerned about uh, this news, but I have, to, I have to act according not only with the facts, but the proven evidence. I cannot go below the judiciary statements. Understand? I assure you understand uh, that uh, this is very, very, very grave accusations. Russia needs such messages to undermine public confidence in the European Union. By suggesting that European Union's support for Ukraine is just a way to distract the public from corruption, propagandists are trying to discredit all the assistance provided by the EU. I wonder why Solovyov's arrested Italian villas are not interesting for his colleagues. Or, for example, Putin's underground residences, Shoigu's palaces and Patriarch Kirill's yachts. I think you know the answer. Ukraine will win. Have a good day.